talk about pedigrees. Pedigrees are useful because they show how traits are passed on in families. A couple of symbols that are useful to know is that a female is represented by a circle and a male is represented by a square. A line between a circle and a square indicates mating. Line down from this line indicates offspring. So this couple had two girls and a boy. The oldest offspring is always on the left. Affected individuals are shaded in. Two horizontal lines joining individuals means mating between relatives. So the circle represents a female. The square represents a male. Shaded shapes represent family members with one expression of a trait. For example, dimples. Shapes that are not shaded represent members with no dimples. In this example, the female has dimples. A horizontal line is used to connect two parents. Lines connect parents and children. The oldest children are placed on the left and the youngest on the right. In this example, there are three children two females and a male. The male child has no dimples. When we're figuring out a pedigree, first of all, we need to know the generations. So the generations are labeled with Roman numerals. In this case, we have three generations. And then each member of the generation is labeled with an Arabic numeral, going from left to right. So in the first generation we have two, in the second generation we have seven, and in the third generation we have six individuals. Now we can refer to each individual by their number. This one is two dash seven. How many children did one two and one one have? We count the numbers coming down from their line directly attached to them. So we have one, two, three, four children. The first two are females, male, and then a female. The oldest child is the one on the left, two dash one. Assuming that having dimples is the recessive trait and no dimples is the dominant trait, we're going to write the genotype of all the individuals on the pedigree. We'll start by writing a legend, noting that having dimples is recessive, so we'll use a lowercase d for dimples and a capital D for no dimples. We know that everyone shaded in has dimples, and so all of them have to have the recessive genotype. Two little d's. Anyone who is not shaded in has no dimples, so they will have at least one capital D, and then we can look to their kids or to their parents to see what the other letter is. We see that one one has a child with two little d's, so they must have given them one little d, so they are heterozygous. Individual 2-3 is their child, they must have got a little d from their dad. Individual 2-2 has two children that have two little d's, so they must have got one from them. Individual 2-6 gets a little d from her dad and gives some to her offspring. And then individual 3-4 is also heterozygous. To 
figure out the chances of individuals 2-1 and 2-2 having offspring with dimples, we're going to try it in a Punnett square. So we'll put one parent's gametes on one side, the other parent's on the other, and we see they have a 50% chance of having a child with dimples.